The Kia Telluride was introduced a few years ago, and it's been a pretty big hit for Kia so far. It's for a few reasons. It's got seven or eight seat configurations, front wheel, all wheel drive, and then it's also got a series of different technologies that are available standard with some pretty neat ones that are available optionally when you look at some of the higher trim levels. Oh, the one in behind me is the 2024 X-Line in Canada, which in the States is the SX Prestige X-Line equivalent. Very similar feature sets. But in this video, you're going to learn the basics of what you need to know about this ride. If you want to know what's going on with the steering wheel cluster, the multimedia screen, things like that, like tech-specific walkthroughs, you can find those down in the description. You'll find a build link for this specific one, as well as the contact details for Durham Kia, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys. There aren't too many differences when you look at the 23 versus the 2024 Telluride. Same color choices, trim level choices, and then drivetrain availability. There's a slight increase in price between the 23 and the 24. Thanks inflation. But outside of that, it's relatively the same ride in between. I mentioned with the drivetrain, in the States, you do technically have front wheel drive standard with the all wheel drive available optionally versus in Canada, we've only got the option for Kia's all wheel drive instead. There are some pretty cool drive modes that you can select in between in the center stack as well. So different sport modes and dynamic modes, but there are also different terrain modes. So useful for slippery, snowy conditions if you're off-roading and all that fun stuff. The tires inside of this thing, you're going to find either 18 or 20 inch. 20 inch tires though, pretty much the norm right across the board with some varying styles for the actual wheel itself. But I mean, overall styling, I think this one is kind of neat. I do love dark, dark wheels and this one looks really solid. Love that new Kia logo there. This one has the surround view monitor. So you can utilize the side mounted cameras, backup camera, and the front facing camera for a really cool 360 view. The front end styling of the Telluride is great. I love the way that the grill's designed. We've got LED headlamps there. And then this one does have the forward sensing system. So whether or not you get the forward sensors is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. So if you want that extra technology, it is available. You just have to look at some of the higher trims in order to get it. Getting under the hood of this thing is straightforward. If you go up, there's a little release on hydraulics. And you've got this, the 3.8 liter V6 engine, which is the only engine option you've got inside of the Telluride. It's naturally aspirated, which means that it's a non-turbocharged engine. Just one less component you got to worry about, which is nice. But power wise, it pushes out 291 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque which is pretty respectable, especially when you get into that sport mode. Like you put your foot down and you are going. It's fun. But there's not too much under the hood. There's a nice little engine cover there with the Kia logo right in the very middle. And then if you're mechanically inclined doing some things yourself, you can easily top up fluids, check change oil, and there's also easy access to the battery. I just recommend like regardless of which Kia model you're in, just make sure you're regularly maintaining your ride. Take it in for regularly scheduled maintenance, regular oil changes, and things like that. You want to make sure you're protecting your investment and getting the best possible life out of your ride all at the same time. Filling up fuel inside of the Telluride is very straightforward. Now, one thing that people have pointed out, and thank you for that, is that when the vehicle is locked, the cover itself is locked as well. So fuel theft, you don't really have to worry about. But once it's unlocked, you can push in order to get inside. So it's just got a regular cover there. So you do have the option of getting a locked aftermarket one if you really are concerned with fuel theft. Looking at fuel quality, just regular 87 octane is all you need to use inside of this thing. So you don't need to worry about putting a premium fuel instead. This thing just loves its 87. The back end of the Telluride is nice. And that same glossy highlight that we saw in the front bumper does follow through to the back as well. There is some technology that's going to be standard inside of this. You're always going to have the backup camera and the rear wiper. This one does have the reverse sensing system on top of that. The Telluride also does have the option for towing. Inside of the majority of the trim levels of the vehicle, you're looking at 5,000 pound towing capacity. But when you get into the X Pro trim level, that's going to bump you up to 5,500 pound towing capacity instead. So if you are needing that little bit of extra capacity, you would have to look at the X-Pro trim level. But one other neat thing is that this one also has a camera mounted along the very top. 
and that's for a fully digital rear view and it looks beautiful it's such a cool feature i wish more manufacturers had it because of how nice and convenient it is getting into the trunk of this thing is also very straightforward so if you look just underneath the u and tell your ride you're just gonna slip your fingers up push Ugh. Uh, you could technically use the key fob there's a button just to the left hand side of the steering wheel as well and you've got this so much space back here which is amazing and so the cargo area by itself not a ton but as you start folding the seats down that's where you get into even more space but there's not too too much back here like off to the right side there's nothing really there off to the left side there's a 12 volt power point and then you can also release the second row so you can fold the second row down this way so it's kind of like a power release down but you do have to manually lift it back up again so this is just like a regular carpeted liner back here lifting this thing up you've got a nice amount of storage space the jack is off to the left hand side and then there's also a release for the spare tire which is located just underneath the vehicle in the back end so if you do want to change the tire yourself you could or you could just use Kia roadside assistance instead. This thing does have all the tether points for the third row. And then if you wanted to fold down the third row seats, there's just a little pull. You're just gonna pull down and release. And down it goes. So very straightforward there. Now, folding down the second row seats, you've got a few different options. So right from the back, you've got the flexibility to do it. So you can just do a push and hold there if you wanted to, but you could also do it from the second row seat. Through the second row, there are two different buttons there. So there's one in order to move the seat forward if you need to get into the third row. And a second one that you can pull in order to release the seat itself. Then you can see there, there is a great amount of space inside of the Telluride. Now, the measurements that I use are under the assumption that we're going from where the lift gate would close. And then for the front end, it's essentially right behind the armrest. So if you've got the first row seats a little bit further forward, a little bit further back, you might gain an inch or two, just depending. But for the other measurements, it's right from the cutoff of the trunk area of the vehicle. The Telluride has some pretty cool technology on top of that. So smart lift gate for if the vehicle, if the door is shut, it'll automatically open up as you approach. But one really nice thing is that if you've got the key fob on you and you start to walk away from the back, look at this, look at this, look at this. It's got a really cool auto close feature as well. So that's one that you do have to enable through the multimedia screen. Taking a peek at the key fob for the Telluride. So it is technically unchanged from last year to this year. Along the one side, you've got your remote start. Along the front side of the, or the other side of the fob, you've got lock, unlock, trunk release, corner panic alarm as well. It's so very straightforward. So in order to remote start the vehicle, you just have to make sure that you're locked first. And then once you're locked, you're just gonna do a press and hold. You can see there, vehicle's remote started. In order to cancel, you're just going to press that little circle button again, and that cancels the remote start. But there's some other pretty neat key fob tricks that you've got inside of this thing. So, I guess one of the big ones would be the window down. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna press and hold the unlock button on the fob. Watch this. See, so press and hold. Down the windows go, you can release to pause it, and then just press and hold again in order to continue the cycle, which is great. Now it is powered down, but it's manual back up again, but it still is nice you've got that option. Another one is that with the doors locked, as long as you get away like 10 to 15 feet away from the vehicle for 10 to 15 seconds, this thing has the smart lift gate. So let's pull you off to the side there. So the door is locked, key fob on me. And you have to get about 10 to 15 feet away for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then, if you've been waiting that 10 to 15 seconds or so, as long as you've got the fob on you, let's say you've got a handful of groceries, kids, whatever the case may be. Ugh. Up it goes, which is amazing. So it is really useful. Now, one other cool thing is that if you need to, you can select different heights for the lift gate too. So if your garage is a little bit lower, you could technically lower it. There are some user selectable heights inside of the multimedia screen. Look at the size of the Telluride. This thing is actually pretty solid. And then this one just has the roof rack rails. There's the option for crossbars on top of that. So if you need crossbars because you've got a carrier, you do have that available as an option. As always, tons of op options that are available aftermarket if you need them.
along the side view mirrors. You can see there, there's all the light and that's going to highlight if you have your indicators going. Blind spot monitoring system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on the other side of the vehicle, that's gonna highlight and let you know. This one does have the blind view monitor. So there's a little side mounted camera there. So when you use your turn stick to go left, right, right through the cluster screen, it's gonna show you what's going on in your blind spot. Really neat. Along the door, if you've got your key fob on you, you can push there in order to be able to lock or slide your hand in in order to unlock the door. Beautiful, we'll get to the seats in the interior in a second, but basic highlights along the door, you can see this nice metallic highlight, wood grain that follows all the way through the dash of the vehicle, basic handle, and this one does have driver seat memory. So you just press the set button first and then one or two after you have your driver's seat set up the way that you'd like it. So you set it up, set your driver's seat up the way you'd like, you press set, and then you either hold one or two to remember your profile. There's a button there in order to power fold your side view mirrors, control your side views, basic window control, little handle there, upgraded audio system. So this one has a few speakers, and then there's a little bit of door storage on top of that. Moving inside, nice leather along the dash, it's good. That wood grain, like I said, follows through basic vent control, and then this is in order to increase the, or decrease the brightness of the, uh, the cluster screen as well as the multimedia screen. This thing is a dedicated tow mode, downhill brake control, you can open and close your lift gate, and then turn your traction control system on or off. Steering wheel inside, the, inside of the Telluride is going to be a manual adjust, so just drop down and it's telescopic. Love that seat though, that's good. And then along the seat, you've got a series of different buttons. So this one, look at this, is going to be for the individual leg cushions. So you can adjust that if you'd like to. And then your basics to move the seat forwards, backwards, go up or down. And then you've also got support for your backrest and four-way lumbar support. The interior of the Telluride is really, really nice, especially when you look at the higher trim levels. Like this is the X line, second highest trim level in Canada. There are some U.S. equivalents that are very similar spec-wise. It's just that the naming convention is different in Canada versus the States. But the X-Line seat, very, very comfortable. I love it. Really good amount of cushion for the headrest there. It's solid. And it's strictly a one-way headrest. or Two-way, I guess, like up and down. You can't go forwards or backwards with it at all. But still, it's a really, really nice amount of cushion back there. That's pretty solid. Like I said, the overall seat comfort is really, really good too. The steering wheel inside of this thing now is really, really nice. That's good. Now the steering wheel itself does have a little heated option. So if your Telluride does have a heated steering wheel, you're going to find the button along the side. This is good. Like it. Now, this is just going to be a basic walkthrough, but if you want a fully in-depth one of how to use the cluster screen, the multimedia screen, things like that, you'll find it down in the description of the video. But some basics, stick there, let's you control your lights, turn your fog lamps on or off. Stick on the right side is going to be for your front or your rear wiper. Very nice. Got a voice command prompt, a few mode buttons, answer or hang up on a phone call. And then these are going to be the buttons for your smart cruise control system. So once you're driving, you turn it on, and then you can increase or decrease one kilometer, one mile per hour at a time. Distance indicator, so how close or far are you away from the vehicle that's in front of you. And then there's a lane centering button there as well. So that's going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go. Beautiful though, all around. It's good. Like this. Dash, one cool thing. Look at this. Will you be able to see it? Oh yeah, yeah, you can head-up display inside of this thing. So the HD is available here as an option if you want it. It's not standard in all trim levels of the vehicle, but it is available. And you've got content selection as well. So through this screen, you've got the flexibility of going through, setup, vehicle. You can kind of customize it a little bit. So head-up display. What do you want it to do? So you can sync it up. You can adjust the brightness of it and a few other things. But one nice thing is that you can also figure out what content you want there. So if you've got a route going, driver convenience settings, you want your radio media information going as well, you've got that flexibility. But I mean, it's so nice that that's available as an option there. You can kind of see right along the side there, that's where it's projecting from. 
but it's beautiful. Really not obtrusive, which is great. Nice dash along the top. You can see wood grain follows all the way through. You could do like a 3M wrap as well if you wanted something different. But the media screen inside of this thing. Squirrel. That, the screen inside of this thing is really, really nice. It does have factory navigation. You can hook up your phone if you want to as well to use nav that way. But you can go full screen maps. Very nice. Phone, like I said, you can go Bluetooth. So if you wanted to just stream your music if you want or make phone calls. Or you can go through a wired connection if you wanted to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze if you're hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Like I said, if you want to walk through and how that stuff works, you'll find it down in the description of this video. So much stuff. Though. This little volume rocker. So the screen itself does have the flexibility of being able to use AM, FM, Sirius XM. There are sounds of nature. And then if you had a USB stick with MB3s, you could also use this on top of that. So the, the speaker setup inside of the Telluride is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But this one has the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds really good. So I'm going to do a little USB audio test. I'm going to... Ooh. Okay. I'm going to start off at zero, and then I'm going to work my way up. And this is just coming right out of the microphone, so there's no post-processing done inside of this whatsoever. So that was set to a little over half volume. So the immersive audio experience that you get inside of this thing is really, really good. There are a series of different buttons there, and that's going to be essentially hot button presses to get to different options inside of the vehicle. As I mentioned, heated steering wheel buttons there if you've got it. Dual zone climate control. All of your basic climate control settings. And typically, you're going to see this thing down, but you can just give it a nice push in order to pop it up. You can see there, 12 volt power point. USB, USB Type-C, and then if you've got a phone that supports wireless charging, and if it's charging up, you're going to see a little indicator light letting you know, and then it also shows you inside of the media screen that a phone's charging up. So you take that off, and all of a sudden that message is gone, which is really useful. But back down, this thing also has the option for heated and ventilated first row seats. Beautiful. Beautiful, and so, so useful all at the same time. Nice little assist handle on both the driver and the passenger side. A little phone storage or storage in general with some cup holders there. You've also got your shifter, which, I mean, the shifter feels good in the hand. You've got park reverse neutral drive. And then if you prefer, you can also go manual mode so you can adjust what gear you're in as you go. Useful. There are a series of different drive modes that are available as well. So you can switch between them this way. So you go between your different drive modes. And then if you push the button, that shoots you out to go between all of your other modes, so your terrain modes. But when you go through the different modes, it also tweaks out the look of the cluster screen. So smart, sport, eco, comfort. And then terrain, you've got snow, mud, or sand. So you can kind of go between any of these modes, but I love how in the sport mode, it tweaks out the overall look. Beautiful. Moving back down, auto start stop. So that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. The beeping that you get as you back up or if you get closer to obstacles, if you wanted to turn that off, you could. Auto hold setting is a useful one. So with the auto hold setting turned on, if you go into drive, you take your foot off the brake, the car is not moving. Very useful safety setting there. There's the parking brake and then the button for 360 camera. Oh yeah. Really nice. So you've got your 360 view, you can kind of zoom in out if you'd like to there, but you've also got a few other modes. So you've got like a tow mode, so it's essentially a camera shooting down if you need to hook up a trailer, backup camera, split view. So this essentially takes your side view mirrors and it shines the cameras that way instead. But one really cool thing about the side view mirrors is that they do have the flexibility of showing what's going on in your blind spot right through the cluster screen as well. I mean, it's, it's so... So nice. That, like I said, utilizes the side-mounted cameras to use. But the 360 camera there also utilizes those, si those side cameras in order to show this view. But then there's also a really cool... Look at this. Love it. 360 view there instead. So kind of as you're moving, you could 
swing it out to this 360 view if you want to. It does stay on at low speeds, but the second you start driving too fast, it does go away, especially when you park, but that's nice. Armrest there is great. There are a few cup holders back there. And then inside of the armrest, there's a little bit of storage space, USB power point down along the very bottom there too. And then shooting up overhead, this one has a very unique mirror. So it's got the auto dimming function, but it's also got, look at this, fully digital in the sense that we can see what's going on right behind us. So you could adjust this out if you want to, so you can brighten it up. You can go higher or lower as well. So it essentially uses a camera that's positioned on the back of the vehicle in order to go this way. So you could flip it out to like a traditional rear view if you want to, or you can go fully digital. I honestly love the fully digital view. I probably keep that on the majority of the time. It is such a damn nice feature. I love it. And then you can see there, individual settings. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, you could program it in if you want to. Got basic sunglasses holder. And then two individual controls. So this is going to be to open up the shade for the rear. And then this opens up the actual roof itself there. So let's go through, like I said, shade in the second row when it's literally just a shade. So you don't have the option to open up that second row window. It's just for the shade. But in the front there, you just have to do it yourself to slide open. And then you can push if you wanted to vent this thing out. But you can also do a push and hold in order to open it instead. Really nice. And then single button press will close it. And just manually slide back again. Got cabin control lights there as well, or you can control each one individually. Tow mode and SOS mode. The visor has a little business card, receipt holder, whatever the case may be. And this thing, you can see there the light pops on when you get past a certain point in the, vi in the vanity mirror, which is great. It's nice. And this thing extends out, blocking all of the sun that might be hitting your face, which is great. Only other thing to point out is that overhead you've got a little assist handle, and that's the same for the driver passenger side in the first and the second row. So I'm six feet tall, and with the seat set up the way that I would typically drive, in the second row I've got a great amount of foot space, great amount of knee space, and like head space inside of the second row, three and a half, almost four inches of space there, which is amazing. You're going to find a little bar between the legs of these second row seats, and that's to slide the seats forwards or backwards. So if you need to create a little bit more space for people that are in the third row, you do have that available as an option if you want it. But comfort of the seat is definitely there. Headrest, not as comfortable as the first row, but still, it's pretty solid. Now, a few interesting things about the Telluride for the second row. You've got the option for either dual captain's chairs, like what we're looking at, or it's going to be a bench seat. So eight seat configuration total. And the number of seats you get is going to be, depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're looking at. Along the driver's side door, see a little tab there. And that's going to be for your sunshade. Beautiful. You've got this little wood grain along the door. A few speakers there. Your basic window control. And then the option for heated and ventilated second row seats. Really nice. Another speaker along the door there, and then you've also got a tiny little bit of storage space as well. Behind the first row seats, driver passenger side, there are some pockets back there too. And then just behind the armrest. So I did mention there are a few cup holders there, but there's also a 12 volt power point as well as a 150 watt power point. So a traditional wall outlet. Up overhead, there's a little handle with a hook on both the driver passenger side, a few basic vents, little controls for cabin lights, you can also adjust what's going on with the temperature for the second, third row and have it go to an auto mode, have this going to face feet, you can turn the system off, and then you can also adjust the fan speed if you'd like to. If you've got child seats, front facing, rear facing, not going to be a problem. You've got all of the anchor points and the tether points in the second and the third row. One nice thing about having the dual captain's chairs is that you can very easily shimmy into the third row. So not tricky by any stretch of the imagination. So if you need to get into the third row, very simple with the dual captain's chairs with that easy pass through to the back. But if you needed to, if you've got the bench configuration or you just physically can't fit in between the seats, 
there is a button along the top, so you can use that in order to slide the seat forward if you wanted to. And then getting in and out on top of that is very straightforward. With the second row seat as far back as it's going to go, in the third row I actually do have a little bit of knee space, a little bit of foot space. The foot space, not crazy comfortable by any stretch, just because of the way that the floor is, but I can still fit in the third row with the second row seat as far back as it'll go. I did mention there's a bar that you can use to slide the second row seat forwards a little bit more if you need to create a bit more space. But I mean, realistically, if I was in this middle seat, I'd just kind of like stretch your legs out. It just would be very, very tight if you had three full-size versions of me in the third row. Uh, up overhead, I've got a little bit of space, like half an inch roughly, and then there's also this little seatbelt. One neat thing is I didn't even realize this could do it, but you could just slide the seatbelt up and tuck it in, and all of a sudden, you don't have to worry about it hitting your head anymore. So if you've only got two people in the third row, it's kind of cool. You could lock that thing up if you wanted to. No idea. You learn new things all the time. A few small highlights. A few USB power points, so type C along the driver passenger side. A few cup holders along both sides on top of that. That is really about it. Oh, interesting. And then inside of the head-up display, it recognized, I guess, that there was a stop sign there. So it said stop in the HUD. It's kind of neat. But... Good amount of power inside of this thing. And, like, especially because the mode that I'm in, so... Down the center stack, there's a series of selectable drive modes, and I'm in the sport mode right now. And sport mode inside of this thing is really good. It essentially holds onto the RPMs a little bit longer, so it just gives you a sportier performance. Like I said, it's a, just a way sportier drive in comparison. So the head-up display inside of this, so I've actually got it to maximum brightness right now, uh, but the kicker is that even though it's maximum brightness, it's it, it's interesting. So I'm wearing gla sunglasses right now that, um, I mean, it's it makes it a little bit difficult to see. So here nor there, like, it's just the nature of sunglasses. Like, these ones are polarized. Like, you can still see it. It's just that with sunglasses off, it's super bright and it's beautiful. It's a little bit dimmer when you've got sunglasses on. But that's honestly, that's been the same way with every vehicle that I've ever been in with an HUD. So just know, go in knowing that if you typically wear sunglasses when you drive, it'll, you can still see the heads-up display. It's just a little bit more tricky to see it. You're not going to get all of the technology in like the lowest trim level. But as you get into some of the SX trims, the X lines, whatever the case may be, that's when you get into some of those better tech options. I just had to test out the, the gas. and oh, That's so, so nice. The acceleration inside of this thing is good. Like I said, especially when you're in the sport mode. And that was a look at the 2024 Kia Telluride X-Line specifically in Canada or the SX Prestige X-Line down in the States. Hope you learned a thing or two. But if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. And I did mention down in the description, you can find a build link for this specific one, all the tech walkthroughs, as well as the contact information for Durham Kia. If you're looking to pick up a Telluride or any other Kia vehicle. Until I see you next time. Take care. Along the door in the second row, there are some pretty neat highlights. So one of them, there. There are some pretty neat highlights in the second row of the Telluride. So the first one is that you may have... Why is this tricky?